While I'm also a small and medium enterprise business, I have two parts of businesses. The first part, I do corporate trainings, and that is etiquette training uh, for Chinese and for Westerners. If I'm targeting Westerners, then I'm giving trainings to pre-departure trainings, for example, and about localization sensitivity training, and also how to succeed in business in China. The second part of my business is actually related to my trainings because I'm a food and wine critic here in China since 2008 and I do a lot of food and wine consulting for foreign businesses that are coming into China. I work with Italian companies, Chilean companies, American companies that want to do business in China. Well, when I first came to China in 2002, I actually worked in a wine importing company. Back in those times, selling wine was actually quite easy because there wasn't that much competition. So I was actually in charge of East China restaurant and hotel sector, and it was just a matter of selling wine to clients. Uh, but nowadays, uh, fast forward 13 years or 14 years, the marketplace, there are many more players, many more wine importers in the market, especially for first tier cities. So the competition is intense and selling wine is actually not that easy as before. Um, I would probably say actually in the uh, big tiered cities like uh, Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou, the market is probably very much saturated. However, I think that in the second tier or third tier cities, there are still kind of opportunities. Likewise, uh, parallel speaking for food industries, Back in 2002, when I first came, there weren't that many imported food products. Just to give you a prime example, avocado. When I first came to Shanghai in 2002, buying one avocado cost me probably 80 yuan because it was all flown in, air freighted, and there, weren't, there wasn't that much demand. Until probably 2009, when the market opened and now I would say 95% of the avocado market are the Mexicans. But the prices have dropped now and I can actually go to any fruit stands um, to buy a reasonably good avocado for about, I would say, between 10 to 13 Why? So as you can see, in these 14 years, the market has changed a lot. There's much more opportunities for imported food or wine to come into China, but that's not just for one country. I think it's open to a lot of countries that want to come and do business in China, especially for those countries that have signed bilateral trade agreements. With China, they actually do have a slight advantage in terms of import tax, etc., compared to other countries that haven't signed um, bilateral trade agreements yet. But having said that, opportunities are there. It's just a matter of finding the right niche market. There are a lot of products, food and wine, that are coming into the um, Chinese market already. But what I see in the market is actually a lack of marketing and education. For example, ice wine. A couple of years ago, I already see importers bringing in ice wine. But to the Chinese consumers, they don't know what it is. It's just a bottle, usually 375 milliliters. They don't know what's inside. They taste it and they say, it's too sweet. They don't know how it's made, and so they taste it once, and that's it. I think there should be more educational information about these products as to how to drink it, for example, how to pair it with Chinese food. In that sense, Chinese consumers don't find it too sweet when they just taste it straight up, or whether it should be chilled, or whether it should be drunk, room temperature. These all make a difference as to the taste of the product. For example, actually I've worked with Canada Beef, which is an organization that promotes Canadian beef in China. They do a lot of series of educational, informational sessions to the trade industry. However, um, the opportunities that I see actually is not just trade. Obviously, it's natural for them to touch the trade industry first so that the chefs and hotels know what the products are, but ultimately, the final consumers that are going to buy these kind of products. How do you distinguish grain-fed and grass-fed beef? For example, what is sirloin, what is ribeye? All these kind of important product information 
consumers are lacking. And I think there are opportunities here, not just about selling your products, it's about the information behind the product, the culture behind the products that would actually attract consumers to buy those products. China is a big country and regulations and rules change all the time, especially when it concerns food and beverage. I actually have been working with the Canadian Consulate here um, through their Trade Commissioner Services, TCS. They actually are the point of contact for any Canadian companies or clients that want to do business in China. As I said, rules and regulations and safety issues change all the time. And the most updated information can probably be obtained through these TCS. They would be able to facilitate your better understanding and easier and more efficient ways of entry into China. Because if you're just doing it on your, on your own, then it is quite difficult to obtain these kind of latest up and coming regulations because these rules and regulations change all the time and it can be just overnight and if you're not paying attention to that your products can get stuck at port um, worst at all if they are perishable products then they get stuck at the port of entry and they get rotten or you know the sell by dates go and then you've lost your products so I think it is actually quite important to get your of contact through the consulates or the embassy in Beijing with these kind of TCS. Food and beverage is the foundation of all cultures. For example, in Canada, you have maple syrup, you have smoked salmon, and you have iced wine. These products are not innate in the Chinese culture, so I think it is quite important to adapt your products to please the Chinese palate. For example, pairing ice wine with Chinese food. How do you work your smoked salmon into some kind of Chinese snacks or even maple syrup? One thing in Chinese cuisine that is quite different to Western cuisine is dessert. It's uncommon to see cakes and pastries in Chinese cuisine. So when selling those maple syrups, would you be wanting to demo your maple syrup to pair with pancakes or, you know, desserts, which is quite hard to relate to Chinese cuisine? Or would you want to pair it with something else that the Chinese can relate to? I think that is the most important. Texture-wise, I think for Chinese palate, we are more nuanced into the texture of the food product. For example, I would say abalone to the Chinese, we value that quite a lot because the texture is quite chewy, while in the West, abalone is not really worth anything. So as you can see in this example, the taste and the texture is very different between Chinese cuisine and Western cuisine. I think for any companies, marketing is very important. As I said before, there are so many imported products into China already. How do you distinguish your product from the others? Also, I think finding the niche market is extremely important because China is very big. Do you just hone in one or two cities? Or is it feasible for SMEs to target the whole of China, which I don't think it is? The way of communicating your products to the end user also is very important. Telling the story of your product, your brand story, which is different to other products. That in a way would make sure that Chinese consumers stick to your brand and not the other brand. In summary, branding, the right way of communicating, finding your niche market in China are three things that are vital to the success of your products and your entry into China.